welcome to another episode of Planet Hunters Coffee Chat. I'm your host, Cassie Prolongo, and joining me is my co-host and fellow astronomer, Nora Eisner. Hey, Nora. Hello. Okay, so we delve, this is part of a collection that we're doing. We're delving into test data light curve, and now with this next episode, we are going to be talking about something called binning. Now, I don't know what that means, but I'm hoping that, I'm hoping that you can explain this and how this is going to relate to all of these other things that we've been covering in previous episodes. And by the way, we're going to be posting somewhere, link within the chat, somewhere here where you can take a look at some of these other episodes, um, or if you need to look at some of the cheat sheets or some of the FAQs, uh, we'll be posting all of that information. So but back to binning. So let's talk about this. What is this? Why is this important? And how are we going to manipulate this data so that we can use it? Cool. So um, hopefully you can you can see my screen there now. Um, yeah. And as we've done in the previous couple of episodes, we just start off with um, some of the code that we we previously worked through. Um, so like I mentioned last time, if any of this doesn't make sense, uh, do go back and rewatch some of the other videos um, and look at those cheat sheets. Um, and hopefully it should all be very clear there. Um, so what we're doing here is actually something we did cover in, in the last video is where we're looking at multiple sectors of data. So uh, again, we're looking at my favorite tick ID there. And we're just going to take the first um, three sectors of data. So let's just start off uh, by plotting those, just so we know what we're getting ourselves into. Um, if we just do dot plot, and then we can see that data. Uh, so this should hopefully be very familiar by now. Um, but today we want to bin this data. So I'm actually going to go over to a different Jupyter notebook and you don't need to write any of this code. This is just code that I pre-wrote just to, to demonstrate this. Um, and what I wanna show you here is what, what binning does. So binning is a way of kind of simplifying the data. So we we'll take multiple data points and kind of make one data point out of them. So we're downsampling the data. And a reason to do that is to get rid of some of this scatter that we can see here. And this is just, uh, well, stellar variability, some of it is noise. And we just want to reduce that slightly so that this transit event that I've, I've zoomed in on this light curve kind of becomes more apparent. Um, so the way that we do this is this is just a zoom in of the transit, but we take all of this data and we split it up into different bins and we define what is known as a bin width. Um, and that's just simply how, how wide those bins are and how many data points fall into those bins depends on that bin width. So in, in this example that I've shown here, we're just, uh, I chose a bin width of 15 minutes. Uh, so these lines that you see here, these light gray lines are separated by 15 minutes each. So okay. if we just, so, oh, sorry, yeah. No, I was just gonna say, so it's by time. The, the bin yeah, this by is, time. well, so there's multiple ways of doing this. You can either do it by the number of data points or you do it by time. Um, in our case, we will we'll be doing it by time. Um, and we're actually, I'm going to just zoom in on part of this data. I press on this zooming button uh, so that we can see that a little bit closer. So this is just a zoom in of, of part of that. And you can see that there are multiple data points that fall within these bins. Now in this process of binning the data, we take all of the bins, sorry, all of the data points that fall within one bin and we take the average of them or the mean of them. And we then consider that to be the data point for that bin. So for the kind of the center of this bin. Um, so I'm just going to show an example of this. So this is the bin data that you have in black here. In orange, you still have that unbin data, again, with that same bin width of 15 minutes. And you can see those black points fall in the middle of those, of those bins, and they're just the mean value. And you can see, hopefully, that, that those bin values, those black points, are just slightly clearer. They have slightly less scatter in, in there, um, and they just make the, the transit event pop out a little bit more. And just to make it just even clearer, we'll, we'll again zoom in on this. Um, and there you can just see that it's it's no longer plotting kind of the scatter that we see here at the top and at the bottom because it's it's smoothing that out by taking the mean. Um, so that that's what binning is. Hmm. Uh, so I, I hope that made sense. Um, it's it's a lot of complex complexity. Um, I like how you explained it, but how would you how would you clarify it so that it's a little bit more condensed. Also, I'm really thrown by your color scheme and not in a bad way because I'm thinking jack-o'-lanterns and also Charlie Brown. <laughs> so clearly my, my brain needs a little bit more coffee. But um, I think how you could, yeah, maybe explain it so that it's a little bit more condensed on why in particular this is, and this is something that you use quite frequently, is that correct? 
Uh, yeah, so we've been a lot, um, even the data on Planet Hunters tests is, is binned. And the main reason to do it is to get rid of of that variability. So with okay. transit events, we know that these events are longer than 15 minutes. So we have no risk of getting rid of these events by binning the data, but we do get rid of the scatter, which is on time scales of shorter than 15 minutes. So it's okay. It, you get rid of short term scatter in the data. Okay, uh, that makes a lot more sense. Okay. And so 15 minutes is sort of, is that a standard uh, metric that you use for time or is that just something that you've chosen for this particular uh, um, exercise? That's something I've chosen for this. Um, on Planet Hunters, we actually also been to, I think, 15 minutes. Um, yeah, it's, but it depends on, on the data that you're using and, and what you're using it for. But 15 minutes is a, is a good starting point. So you can easily rerun this. We can um, even do this now. We can go up to my code, which you do not need to, to read. We'll get back to how we define this. I'm gonna quickly define this as 30 minutes, rerun this. Um, and you can see, so now these bin sizes are bigger, but because they're much, or because they are larger now, they're twice the size, we are getting slowly but surely starting to get rid of some of that shape that we had in there before. So you need to make sure that you don't make the bin sizes too large. Um, otherwise you do start getting rid of, of trends that, that you want to have in there. Gotcha, um, okay. Thank you for clarifying that. That helped uh, tremendously actually with my, <laughs> trying to understand and wrap my head around that. Okay, great. Um, so yeah, thing. you just saw lots of code up there that was probably very confusing. Yeah. So we're going to do this in a much simpler way than I did in this example here. And we're going to do it with light curve as we've previously used, we previously used light curve to, to do this kind of plotting. Um, so let's again, just define this as um, maybe the bin time. And we say we want to have a bin time of 15 minutes, but because light curve requires this to be in units of days, we need to do 15 minutes divided by 24 and divided by 60 to get that into the units that light curve requires it in. Um, I hope that makes sense. Um, so once we have to find that, we can now go and, and bin that data. So let's see what we define this as. We define this as the light curve collection. So we'll do light curve collection underscore bin and it's like curve collection. The function is very conveniently called bin. We then have to define <laughs> that bin time. So we have to put that, that in that in there. And, and that's it. That's how we, we bin that data. So we'll just let that cell run. That's bin underscore time um, in the parentheses. Is that correct? Yeah, that's just what I defined it as. So um, you can define this variable as, um, I guess what whatever you want. So you can also write in there if you want to do this differently. You can write in the fifteen divided by twenty four divided by sixty, which which will do that same thing. Oh, now I ran it again. Now I have to recalculate it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it has actually finished running. So I'm going to plot this um, with that dot plot function, and you can see it there. So this is still. Uh, at least to my eyes, this doesn't look any better than what we had before. Um, but that is partly because it's using those lines that I, I keep going on about how much I don't like them. Um, so instead, let's plot these, let's plot the binned and the unbinned data on that same figure, just like I had in that example in that different notebook before. So we can really see the comparison between them. Um, so because we're plotting two different things on the same on the same figure, we now have to define what is known as a plotting region. And we do that with that PLT function. So this is within this matplotlib.pyplot um, library, which we've imported as PLT. So we're going to define this plotting region um, and we do that using fig axis. So we're defining a figure and we're defining axes um, and we'll do dot PLT. And we're going to use something called subplots I'm going to define a Ooh. plotting size. You can make this whatever size you like. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and plot both the bin data and the unbin data. So that's LC underscore collection. I'm going to go back and check that that is actually what I called it. Um, it is like curve underscore collection and we'll do dot plot. Dot and then plot. we've defined this figure and we've defined this axis and we're going to tell like curve that we want to plot it on these axes specifically. So we just say X equals X. Um, I'm going to format this to make it look slightly nicer. So I'm going to say line width equals uh, zero, marker equals, uh, we'll do a, a kind of an, a 
a circle instead of just a point a color oh you didn't like my dark orange uh, what, what color would you like <laughs> let's do yellow yellow okay we'll, do, we'll make it gold it's just slightly easier to see okay um the yellow is, is very light so we don't want it to disappear in the page um okay so that's our unbin data so now we're also going to plot the bin data so we'll do like curve underscore collection underscore bin because that's what we defined it as we'll do that plt ax equals ax because we want to plot it on those same axes on that same figure again line width equals zero marker equals we'll again do a dot we'll make these black so that they contrast nicely Color equals black um and that marker size will also make that one all right you spotted a mistake before me no that's okay uh, i'm still oh i did argument oh i had marker sorry this needs to be marker size not marker you can't have the same argument in there twice marker oh now it really looks like charlie brown <laughs> like a b <laughs> it does look well. like a b oh my goodness <laughs> wow it really does <laughs> see it's ingrained in my head now <laughs> nice color combination um okay cool so what i wanted to show with this is that with that bin data it is often just slightly easier to pick out those um those transit events um and not just because the yellow is slightly difficult to see um but if we zoom in slightly here um, we can see the kind of the bin data in black there and the unbin data, you can see it gets rid of some of that scatter and that does often just make it easier to, to spot those transit events. So that's the reason why we bin data um, and why it's important to cover this. Um, so I, I hope that all makes sense. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fantastic. Although I'm still, <laughs> we're going to have to title this episode, Charlie Brown or Bees or something <laughs> like that because of the color scheme. Guys, doing things with color is a lot of fun. I mean, it can really, it can make a conversation pop. I'm really sorry for that, for that. but you know, it's just, it's, it's fun to do things like this. It's, um, it's a conversation starter or an ender, depending on how you're looking at it. Um, I was able to follow along and I have to admit that was probably the most amount of coding I've done yet. So I can see as we're building this collection that the layers of complexity are starting to get a little bit more uh, good, you know, we're getting more complex than the ideas and, but it's not, again, not scary. It's, I feel like we're gradually building, um, layer upon layer with all of these things. So this is cool. This is really cool. Yeah. I, I like that we're going through this, Nora. <laughs> no, it's good. Yeah. We're, we're kind of building up all the, all the skills that we need. So we'll next week or in the next episode, we'll, we'll combine all of the skills that we've learned so far. Um, also something I wanted to mention is I would encourage everyone to follow along as we do this. Um, so you can download either an empty notebook or, or the already filled in notebook and to either run the cells that are already filled in at the same time or to, to try and copy the code um, as we go through it. Um, yeah, so all of those are, are available. So I would encourage everyone to do that. Yes, thank you, Nora, for saying that. And we're gonna be continuously dropping links somewhere on here. So uh, be sure to look back and refer to it. Um, in future episodes too, we're going to start doing like live office hours so people can go through these or have questions, things that they want to ask Nora or any, any other astronomers. So, and let us know. I mean, let us know if there's something that you're really stuck on that you want us to go through. Um, take this opportunity, ask, ask Nora these questions because that's what we're here for. This is what we're trying to do. Anyway, I think we are completely over time. <laughs> we have lost the plot a little bit. Um, but this was fun as you, you know, I'm getting like more familiar with this and I'm having a lot of fun with it. Um, so until next time, thank you so much, Nora. Really enjoyed this episode and looking forward to learning more about Python in the next. Aww, thank you. Bye. Thank you.